us a bit about yourself. Okay. Uh, my name is Carden. I'm 44. I'll be 45 the last day in May. Uh, I was a registered nurse up until 2007. And uh, I had two children, two daughters, Liza and Hannah. I was just uh, shocked, I guess, shocked's the word. Shocked that it was happening. When he ended up squirting lye on me, I didn't know that it was lye at the time. So I didn't know what it was. Um, and the, right before I passed out the last time, I actually thought, was the only time I thought of death, because I actually thought he'd put something on me that's gonna light me on fire. That was the only thing I could think of, of why he was squirting something on me was to light me on fire. So that's the only moment that was really heavy in my heart because I thought, oh, I'm not gonna be able to see my kids again. So when I woke up that last time when I heard the policeman yell, I was so happy inside because I didn't die. He didn't put me on fire, I was still here. So to me, I was gonna live. And the thought of death never occurred to me again. Through it all, it never occurred to me that I'd die. What happens with deep chemical burns is that uh, unfortunately lye more than acid tends to penetrate into the tissues as it sort of liquefies it along the way. And um, it damaged uh, Carmen's uh, skin of the entire face and most of the scalp. But more importantly, it damaged the deeper structures of the face as well. She had something like 55 operations um, just to get through the acute phase of the injury from the burn to being essentially healed. But then multiple reconstructive operations as well to loosen up some of the tightness, especially on the neck uh, where she had numerous operations. I was calling him adult my neck and adult a couple of other things and that's when he mentioned to me adult to see if I was interested in being a candidate for the face transplants. Well the first thing I considered I said can you is there any way, can you assure me that you can bring the face all the way down to replace my neck? Because that was my biggest thing. I wouldn't go through it if I was just gonna have the same scars and same pain in my neck. So he said he thought he could. He could bring it all the way down to my trachea, which you can see he did. And that would get rid of all the scars in my neck. The second thing was how much more function would I have in my face? Because at the time, before the face transplant, I didn't have that much function. I didn't have eyelids. I couldn't blink. I just had a hole in this eye so you could just see a hole where I could look out and see you. We had Carmen listed uh, since, I believe it was de early December of 2011. And um, actually a couple of weeks after her listing, we got a potential donor, but ultimately failed for other reasons. Uh, but then there was essentially an entire year of no offers, meaning that there was not even a, a reasonably feasible match for her. And that period of time was obviously very long for Carmen and, uh, and somewhat frustrating, I can imagine. So 14 months from her time of listing, we finally got a call about a donor that wasn't perfect, but was the best we have seen in 14 months.
mom's name is Cheryl Donnelly Ryder. That's her smile. That's a big smile. <laughs> we had a very unique relationship. Um, I feel I didn't really know anybody else who had one like us. Um, we, I lost my father when I was very young. She lost the love of her life um, to a drunk driver. And I was two years old and she was 27. So since then there was this, um, we were very attached. She took really good care of her body um, and unfortunately had high blood pressure within the last few years and um, wasn't on uh, Western medication. Uh, she was seeing a Vietnamese doctor, he was brewing her teas and I've seen him too and he's worked miracles for me um, and for her. Uh, but this time it wasn't cutting it so. She died of a stroke three months ago, almost to the day. Dr. Tonahawk called me on a Wednesday afternoon right before I went to piano lessons and said, we have a potential donor. She's a little older than what I said I wanted somebody within five years of my age, especially on the higher end. But um, he said, she's a little older, she's 56. And he said, and I, I wanted to ask you if that's okay, because I really think she might be a good enough match. And I said, okay, then 56 is fine if you think that that's a, a real potential, that this could happen. And he said, yes. So then he called me again at 11.30 that night and said, the family said yes. Her face looks great, or do you want to do it? And then I said, yes. So he said, be here by 4 a.m. Wow. Well, that 4 a.m. was Valentine's Day, the day of love, the day of giving, the day of gifts. So to me, that was my gift. So I, I knew in my heart it would work out, so I just went with that. The face is recovered by essentially going through steps of uh, surgical steps um, in a sequence that allow us to get the proper nerves, muscles, cartilage, bone, whatever is needed to replace on the recipient. Um, and the tricky part of the recovery is that the unit ultimately has to stay alive from vessels um, that cannot be injured and they are fairly small and they branch extensively. So it's a somewhat tedious but also a high stake part of the operation. If you make a bad cut, you can lose everything. After surgery, you know, I was in the hospital for six weeks, and I really didn't, I didn't know the donor's name. I didn't know her name. I didn't know anything about her other than the fact that she was 56. You know, I didn't know anything about her. And I really wanted to know, because I talked to her, and I, you know, it's hard, I, I didn't know what to call her. So, you know, those kinds of things, and I really wanted to know a lot about her, you know, who she was, what, what she, you know, what she believed in, you know, what, what made her happy, what made her cry, those kinds of things. I was really interested that I respect the family, you know, the family's rights and the family's grief that they were going through. So I just put it in the back of my mind and I said, well, I hope in the next year or two I get to meet the family. 
sir, I was coming down Tuesday for my appointments and then staying over for the press conference on Wednesday. So they, they gave me a 24 hour notice where she wants to meet you and I was thrilled. I was nervous. I didn't, I didn't know what to expect. I, you know, I didn't know what to say. I didn't know how to act. So I just sort of, oh, you just sort of go with the flow. You don't worry about it. And then as soon as I met her, it was just so easy. She was just so beautiful and so accepting and, and just so peaceful that she made it, it was really easy to, to talk to her. I looked at her face and, and Carmen knew and she's, and I said, can I touch it? And she said, you can do whatever you want to my face. <laughs> and my first thought was, well, I'm gonna smooch you on the lips <laughs> at some point. We didn't do it then, but. She gave me a couple of pictures uh, of her mother and, it, and she told me a lot about her and it just, it just made me feel even better. You know, it made me feel like, you know, she's still, she's still here because I've, I've got her face. So, so for Narinda, I think that's just really nice for Narinda to have that in her life. It was more like a sci-fi novel. At that point, I was like, wow, you can actually do that? And I had many questions, um, one being, you know, I know this might be a stupid question, but is her face going to, is it going to look like my mother? And they said, they said no. They said um, everyone has different bone structures and um, so and muscle structure, so it was going to mold to her face. Um, it definitely looked like her, and I guess this, it was good to hear that at the time. I don't know how I would have felt to have known that there's like a mom clone walking around. Um, but even if I did, I, I mean, maybe I would feel the same way. Just lucky to have to see, I get to see her again. I had forgotten what it was like to look nor normal. And the first time I went into the grocery sh store, nobody looked at me. And and that, that was, I noticed nobody looked at me. And it was like, well, that's sort of really nice. So then I, after I got the face transplant, then I really noticed about looking more normal and having people say, oh, you, God, you look great. You're beautiful. Oh, my. And I hadn't heard that in years. So that was, that really sort of caught me by surprise because I wasn't thinking about the physical look anymore. I sort of, you know, moved on from that. So that was actually a pleasant surprise. Well, I started taking piano lessons in December and he was my piano teacher down at the local Blue Mountain Music. Well, I was, I was impressed with her condition and what she's been through and what she wanted to do. That she wanted to move on with the life and live. And live like she means it. I wasn't thinking about having a relationship now. I felt I was ready for one. Because I'd done all this work, I'd come so far. And I was ready to share my life again. I wanted to be happy like everybody else, regardless of what I looked like. I never felt, I never knew, and I never contemplated not looking like that again. After all the seeking and searching I did within to find out for myself why I was here as a human, and what life is really about to me. I realized that all these events, negative and positive, are all meant to tell us to a new place, are all meant to, to tell us to be the people we really want to be. So for me not to forgive is only hurting me. It's not hurting him. He's already hurt in his own way. He's already created his own life. Nothing I can do I do is going to change him. It's easy to blame someone like him. 
that it doesn't help. Desperado, why don't you come to your senses? The now right in senses for so long now. The hard one that I know that you've got your reasons. These things that are pleasing you. It hurt you somehow. To draw the queen of diamonds, story she'll beat you if she's a no. You know the queen of hearts is always your destiny. Seems to need some something had to lay it on your table that you only want. The ones that you what that you what that you can get. Death it brings me joy to see Carmen sharing her story with many people, and she's inspiring many people. That's what my mom always wanted to do. I don't have any big plans, or you know, so much because. I never know what's going to happen because look at the turn my life has taken. I knew would have never been able to, to, to guess that. The only thing I want to do is to share my story, meet people, a lot of, you know, a lot of people, and help them the best I can. That's what I want to do. I want to pay it forward for all the good that people have given me. She's my friend and I fell in love with her and I told her I'm 100% behind you. And I have been and I will be.